got some London dry gin. We have some Bacardi. So I've never had a mint julep before. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, that's really good. Hey everybody, my name's Katie Sauter, engineer by day, wedding planner by night, and I know very little about actually and mixing drinks, so I wanted today to do something a little bit different. Because even though I know the logistics of having like a DIY alcohol bar, I really don't know how to do the mixology. So I decided, let's learn together. <laughs> I'm actually going to start by making a mocktail. Uh, I took these from Instagram, something called the Mindful Mocktail, and I'll link it below. And uh, it's not sponsored. I'm just here having fun. Nothing actually in this video is sponsored, uh, just an FYI. So feel free to get out your ingredients and make them with me. Before I start though, I wanna mention that when you are doing a DIY alcohol bar, I have two calculators, an ice calculator and an alcohol and beverage calculator down below. We're gonna go through some tips for some DIY alcohol stuff while I make some stuff. It's fun. Yeah, again, none of these are sponsored. These links are totally free. These are the ones that I use when I'm planning events, so highly recommend using them. They're usually pretty good and usually pretty accurate. So a reminder, I'm making two recipes. Uh, the first one is going to be a mint julep mocktail, and then I'm going to add alcohol afterwards just to be like, you know, I wanted to taste the mocktail version as well. So I'm making the mint julep first, and then the second recipe is going to be something called a lemon mocktail not very creative. Let me tell you what I got. All right, we got some London dry gin. We have some Bacardi. Have a little like vodka. Um, I've never tried this one before, but it came with like this free little thing, plus it was on sale. A little Mi Campo, which is always good. I've had that before. And then some a little bit of this. I've never tried it, but uh, I thought, you know, a little Kentucky bourbon would be perfect for a mint julep. So here we are. It was all on sale, so you know. All right, so we're gonna go get the cocktails. Now, I don't, I don't look glamorous all the time. A low shock, oh my God, I went to the gym, holy crap. And it's raining and I have glasses. And if you are someone who wears glasses, you know what the struggle is. So yeah, I'm wearing this hat. It is the way it is. Yeah, I wanted to do this so that I could one, learn a little mixology because I'm really bad at making homemade drinks. I'm just really bad at it. Can I make it good? And can I make it pretty? And then the other one, will this make for a good signature cocktail at a wedding? We'll find out at the end. For the mint julep recipe, I printed it out because I need that. I'm actually, even though it, says it serves to, I'm probably going to make a little bit more than that just so that I can have some later. I might mix in the uh, the ginger ale afterwards uh, later on. All right, we're going to make the regular amount for the recipe. So it calls for one cup of water, half a cup of sugar, and one cup of mint, which is a lot of mint. So we'll find out what it needs from us. So it says, to make the mint syrup, combine sugar and water in a small saucepan over medium heat and stir until the sugar dissolves. All right, let's start with that. So it says to mix the sugar until it like dissolves, but you know, as it heats up, it's also gonna dissolve. So I'm just gonna like focus on the mint right now and actually like washing it and stuff. So to continue with the checklist, you also want to consider glassware. So this could be, it depends on the kind of cocktail you're making. I don't have very much glassware today, so it's not gonna be very fancy. I do have it paired. Some of the glassware you might want to consider, cups, water goblets, wine glasses, tumblers, shell glasses, things like that. You'll also want coolers if there's no fridge. You'll need a bar if there isn't already one. You'll need bar backed. More on that later. And you'll need storage tubs, wine bottle openers, and beer bottle openers if you're having beer and wine. You'll also need garnishes. That could include like salt, lemons, limes, uh, mint leaves, blueberries. You know, it could be some mixture of sugar and something else or some mixture of salt and something else for a rim. You'll also want stirrers as well as cocktail napkins, signs for your 
weird beverages. So this could be like a cute little sign for that. Um, and then bartenders. Y'all wanna think about those? I definitely recommend that over going for a free for all. All right, so it says to add the mint and increase the heat until the mixture comes to a gentle boil, stirring occasionally. All right, we can keep doing this. Then it says to reduce the heat to low, put the lid on and simmer for 10 minutes. But I think that we can move on to the other drink while we're waiting for this because then it also says to remove the heat and leave covered until the mixture cools. The longer you leave it, the stronger the mint flavor will be. Then it says leave to cool, then strain. So yeah, we're gonna have to wait a bit, I think, because uh, that's gonna take a while. In the meantime, it's a time! The free wedding planning timeline. It goes through 12 months of wedding planning. I made because I was frustrated that other timelines honestly don't have enough detail. And I think that that's really a problem, especially if you're like, oh crap, I forgot to buy cake topper. So it includes little details like that. I also include a free mini guide for planning your wedding party. And it is going to help with making your wedding party situation much easier. It's uh, they're both in the link below. Check it out. Shameless vlog time over. It looks like we have a boil. Uh, so I'm going to reduce the heat to low and put a lid on it like it suggested. And then I am going to leave that for 10 minutes. I'm gonna start a little timer and we will come up to it. So here we are back at it. So I sliced a lemon. I relented the fact that I bought four lemons, even though the recipe says one tablespoon of lemon juice and two lemon rounds. I don't know why I thought that that meant four lemons, um, but here we are. All right, so I wasn't sure what would be a good alcohol to go with this one, but I will taste the mocktail and let you know what I think if it needs alcohol. So I added in the honey, I uh, added in the lemon and uh, I muddled them. And and um, I, you know, used my nice little presser. And now it says lots of water. Did I say water? I meant ice. Ice, I add lots of ice. Technically ice is water. Then top with the coconut water and sparkling water. Now it is time to add the coconut water and the, and the soda water. So uh, that's the coconut water. Now time to add this. All right, <laughs> this is another half cup. this might be the prettiest thing I've ever made as far as drinks go. Look at that. Let's see, let's figure this out. How is it? Oh God, I'm pouring it on my hand. You know, I think the more I sip it, the more I enjoy it. But right off the bat, it's like a weird mix of sweet and sour. I feel like the mint is weird. I thought this would be better than it is. <laughs> but it's still a cocktail idea. I mean, if you think this would be a good combo, give it a try yourself and uh, maybe this will be your thing. All right, well, and while I wait for the other things to cool, why don't I tell you a bit more about like some things that you actually need to think about when you're using calculators. So there's a few factors that you wanna think about. So one of them would be time of day. If you are going to have an event during the brunch hours, you want to take whatever the calculator gives you and maybe go for only like 40% of those drinks. Like definitely still have water, but maybe include coffee. And if it's a midday wedding, so if it's like at noon, then you definitely want to do like 10% less. So you wanna give it like a 90% multiplier. For evening weddings, go with whatever the calculator gives you. That is going to be your best bet at making sure everyone is well beveraged. Another thing to consider is seasonality. So if you have your wedding is during the spring or summer, or if it's going to be hot out, then you probably want to have more ice but people also tend to gravitate towards like fruitier clearer beverages like white wine over red or they'll go for like more of a, a riesling over a chardonnay they might go might want to choose half of ice and ipas over stouts and porters choose vodka over whiskey another thing you want to think about while you're doing this is um who is serving it if it's a self-serve station, you're gonna be more likely to run out of alcohol. People tend to have really big pores. It's like putting a kid in a candy store. Newbie bartenders, so amateurs and people who are new to the business might also pour more. So definitely add that in for your calculations. Or if you're hiring bartenders, you want to have one bartender per 50 guests. And you also wanna have one bar back per 75 guests. Add an extra one or two for mixed drinks, depending on your guest 
to count. If you're not doing mixed drinks, then the one bar back per 75 guests is going to be your perfect number. Then also think about you and your crowd. So what are your favorites? Like if you're like, I know it's winter, but freaking love straight rye whiskey, then you're going to be like, okay, I'm going to have rye whiskey no matter what, even though I literally just said probably not whiskey uh, in the summer. Do you, you do you boo. You know. And then also, like, what does your crowd love and prefer? So maybe you have a cultural thing where you need a specific kind and uh, you'll want to think about that as well. Looks like the mint julep is ready. Let's try it. All right, so uh, it says to add crushed ice. And then after we are done adding the crushed ice, we are going to, oh, wait, hold on. First it's strain. All right, we're going to strain it. Look, ice. Look. Okay, now um, it says add some ginger ale to it or a non-alcoholic bourbon. I don't have a non-alcoholic bourbon. I have like a regular bourbon. It says or. So it makes me wonder. And then it says a quarter cup of mint syrup. Quarter cup sounds like a lot to me. It does mention at the bottom um, that you can use a tablespoon of the mint syrup. And I think I'm gonna do that because I just am not a big sugar person and the ginger ale's already really sweet. I've got a tablespoon and I am going to add in the syrup. We have added it in. Now we are going to do the ginger ale part. So I bought these Fever Tree ginger beers because I think they're really good because I like it when my food bites me back, which is what this does. If you want a ginger beer that bites you back, this is this is it. If you don't like that, then do more of the Canada Dry. All right, here we go. So this is this is five ounces. So it's a little over a half a cup. And the recipe says to put half a cup. So I'm gonna put the majority of this in here and stir it gently. I'm gonna put too much crushed ice in here. I've tasted it. I actually do think it needs more than the tablespoon of um, mint. All right, I've added a second tablespoon. Let's see how this is. All right. That is excellent. Thank goodness, because the lemon cocktail thing was not doing it for me. I'm so glad. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's really refreshing. Well, that was a success. It does say to put a sprig of mint in to be fancy, but uh, I'm gonna add that in after I add the bourbon. So let's add some bourbon. So I'm gonna add a shot and this thing I happen to know. So one shot is an ounce and a half. The top is one ounce, the bottom is a half. So I'm going to do one complete shot as I feel like that would be the most genuine mint julep. And also maybe because I feel like I need it right now. It's the afternoon, feeling good. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna add it in. All right. So I've never had a mint julep before. <laughs> you need to make this drink. If you like whiskey, you are gonna like this. Oh my gosh. Mm. How have I gone my whole life without this? Maybe I'm, I think a traditional mint julep doesn't have the ginger ale. So I've made something else entirely, but I, I think that's a really good twist on this. That is so good. It's definitely sweet. So if you don't really like sweet beverages, if you don't like mint, and if you don't like whiskey, you don't like ginger ale, then uh, it's not for you. I think the only thing that's disappointing in the proportions that I've done, the ginger beer is not spicy anymore. I hope that some of these DIY bar tips were helpful for you and maybe that you feel inspired to try one of your own. If you liked this video, you might like some of my other videos. Check this one out where I do some adorable wedding ideas. Give a nice salt rim to that like button and a nice little lime slice on that subscribe, but keep it PG for me as always, okay? Give, give it a saucy little spin, a little whirl, if you will, a little oink, you know, just to be silly. But, uh, Keep it PG for me, okay? As always. Bye.